Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to everyone. I'm Davina, and my topic is coastal defense and management of water upstream, a response to climate change. And it is based in St. Kitts and Nevis. So originally, St. Kitts was one of the most fertile, um, has one of the most fertile landscape in the Caribbean. We had no problems with water, no problem with flooding. Um, the only problem we had was hurricane, but because of climate change and a lot of changes in the atmosphere, we are now experiencing sea level rise, um, flooding, um, sea level rise, salt water in, um, intrusion into our aquifers. So I wanted to base my, my project on this solely, dealing with water upstream and dealing with water from the coastal area. Okay. So just the background of um, St. Kitts. It, this is a picture of how it looked from 2023 to 2003 to 2023. Originally, it was nice and luscious, had a lot of green. And then as the years passed by, they built a lot of roads and a lot of construction just to um, have to transition into the tourism industry. And from doing this, they had to reconstruct a lot of um, waterways. So they they put the airport there. And because the guts used to run from the sea, from the mountain to the sea, it was flooding the airport. So they had to redirect the water to flood through communities and use the roads to lead the water to the, the sea. And in doing so, in this area, it was the it is the water aquifer, the biggest one for the city. And because they redirected the water, this area no longer gets recharged when it rains. So all the water just comes from the mountain and goes right down to the sea, which is one of the reasons why it's causing a desertification kind of effect. No more luscious green. We have water shortages. Um, we have rationing systems, so forth. Okay, and a little bit about the climate background. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. It's in the Caribbean region. The area that I'm using, it's um, zero to 31 meters above sea level. And we have tropical storms, hurricane, flooding, sea level rise. And the climate, the temperature is roughly 25 degrees all year round. So it's, it's tropical, it's nice. Once ago, it used to rain a lot. Now it just rains maybe once a day or once a month or once every three months. It's not as frequent as before. Okay, so because I'm dealing with water related issues and it's both upstream and on the coast, I looked at how does nature regulate hydrological flow? Okay, so I came up for upstream, I came up with the idea of having different levels in the landscape. Some are hill-like and some are um, little holes in the ground. Um, the reason why I did this is because when I looked at all of the um, strategies and all of the, um, the nature-inspired animals, they all said that water takes time to go over, through, and between things. And what I noticed most about it is they all were curved and they had rough surfaces. And they either had one and two behind, which is a three-like structure, or two and one behind, just to allow water to move in and out. So that's why I created this one for the landscape upstream. And this was inspired by the beaver dams. So their inspiration was the beaver dams, they impound water. So they allow the water to build up and then they decrease the flow. And they do this in four stages. 
there are four different ponds. They, the first one, it allows water to go over. The second pond allows water to go through. The third one allows water to go around. And the last one allows water to go underneath. So this is the abstract design I used for the beaver. I placed it in four different ponds and I had the three um, dimensional structures as in two, two holes in the ground and one hill or two hills and one hole in the ground to allow the water to move in and out and over the landscape. So it would decrease the flow in um, wherever it's placed. And I also created this where it can be like a, a community or a park when there is a lot of water or flood. It, um, you can't use the park. It will use like a detention pond to hold back water. And when it's sunny, no water, no flood, you can use it as a recreational space. And it, uh, it can also be used as a house, meaning the structure can also be used as a house. And if you put it three houses at one point. Um, it can also be used as a small community. The more you put in the structure, it becomes house, a community, a little small city, and then a town. So this is just a, a rough sketch of how it would look if it's a house. It's, this one is like a one bedroom house and if needs be, it can be used as a two bedroom house, three bedroom house, four bedroom house, but the structure will remain the same. It's a three point structure. And this structure allows water to go around it and through it. And it will slow, it will slow down the, the, um, the, the velocity of the water if in the event there is a flood or a sea level rise. Okay, and on the coastal side of it, I designed something that mimics the mangrove and it's a structure that has 344 sets and it's it's designed to allow water to um rise and come back down and do not go into land well if there is a tsunami or a big wave say that for example there's hurricane the water because it's at a buffer zone of 1.5 kilometers, as the wave come in, it slows down the velocity and it would just be like a small little wave at the end. And it, it would not go into shore um, with a fast velocity. And it can also be used as like a recreational space because we're a tourism industry. So when the cruise ships coming, we can use small canoes to take the passengers from the big cruise ship and bring them through the little mangrove site and then to the island okay and just a little bit of how it looks this is the structure that would decrease um water flow it looks it looks weird but it actually <laughs> works and so this is a um a simulation i did to show how fast the water comes in and how slowly it will release out so I started with a 0 0.5, 0 0.56 um, meters per second. And when the water goes through the structure, it decreased it to 0 0.03 um, meters squared per second. So there is a 0 0.5 second meter squared um, velocity that it decreased, that it decreased the, um, the speed of the water by. So Anything that goes through this, it would be extremely calm. And this is the structure. It was, while doing the simulation, it was very big. It crashed my computer. So I only use one portion of it, which is seven small structures. This is the whole structure with 343, but I only get to do the simulation with the seven. And the seven, it decreased it by 757 um meters per second Davina, i'm sorry i'm just interrupting for time a little time check here we're okay. fast approaching the end <laughs> okay 
So this was inspired by the mangrove and I use the 10 strategies, how they allow the water to decrease, whether it's the distance, the height of the trees, the species of trees, the positioning of the trees and their distribution of the trees. And it's mostly done in the root structure. So that's why it looks like a big tree, like kind of thing. And my abstract design principles, I focus on the literal model, the form, the system, the process, the feedback loops from both the beaver and the mangrove. And I use the structure to, to gain the blueprints. And I mostly focus on the water level, the wind direction, and the sloping of the two um, species. And my terms for negotiation was, it must be durable, it must be strong, it must be adaptable. It can be scalable, modular, and it must be flexible. And it must be um, cost effective. So my next step for this one, I would like to promote biomimicry in the Caribbean region so I can get um, interested persons to work on the project with me, source funding, and potentially build a small network so we can do um, design and research to allow locals to see it is possible to be um, sustainable and live um, sustainably in the small islands. Thank you. Well Thanks. done. Oh. Incredible. I love the systems level. 